Hey y'all, Julie Still rolling with Evolve and Thrive Events, and today I'm talking about writer's block. So I am going to relate writer's block to a sloth and a bee. I, on my last video, I talked about um, becoming a bestseller, best-selling writer, and how basically you have to um, write more. <laughs> And so if you have writer's block, if this is something that you're struggling with, it is very problematic. And there is no like one great answer to this problem. Um, everyone suffers from it, so you are not alone. And I just wanted to find a fun way for you to really understand writer's block and how to overcome it. Um, yeah, so I said, I, I don't know if I said this on my last video or not, but basically um, you have to have like five books out there before anybody even knows who you are, unless you are just this perfect, brilliant writer. And if you do your research and look at other writers' journeys, um, you'll realize that not very many people are successful on their first book. So um, five books is pretty much the key to getting a name started for yourself as a writer. Um, so I know that can sound daunting, but, and especially if you're sitting there with your first book thinking, I am never going to finish this book, so I might as well give up. Um, I have, I'm three books in and I still feel that way. I'm writing, I'm working on a book right now that I've been, actually I'm working on three books. So this is how my brain works. I am working on three books that I started last year and they're, you know, it's just kind of like, eh maybe maybe not so I'm suffering from this too and this is one of the reasons why I'm talking about it um, also something that we can talk about at send in stories the writers retreat but I want you to think about your you have two sides if you split yourself down the middle you know you have like left brain right brain and the differences in those two but let's just say that you have the creative side which is a sloth the sloth is a wanderer. I love sloths. They're so cute and just like crazy to watch. Um, I have a magnet on my refrigerator. That's a sloth that says, don't hurry, be happy. It makes me happy. Um, and as a writer, it really is a very good thing to live by. Because I mean, if you get in a hurry and you think you're going to write a book overnight, it's not going to happen. So you should just be happy and keep doing it and trust the process. Um, the other side is like a bee, a busy bee, always um, paying the bills, going to work, doing the laundry, washing the dishes, um, doing all the practical stuff. And so it's good to have two sides, but the, the busy bee is one that has just been nurtured by society, right? We, we all know that we're supposed to go to school, we're supposed to go to work, we're supposed to do these things, and it's, it comes easier to us than something that is more on the creative side, on the sloth side of things. Um, so let's just imagine that your sloth is like a pet. So when you first get a sloth, it's not going to be, you know, just all loving on you. It's going to have to trust you. And there's ways that you have to build trust. So you have to coax the sloth. You have to start with um, feeding the sloth, nurturing the sloth, having patience, and praise, praising the sloth. So you want to nurture in the sense of routine. So you don't want to pressure the sloth at all. Um, you know, like if you, if this was a pet, you would feed it every day and you would expect that eventually the sloth would trust you, trust that you're going to bring it food. And so how do you feed your creative side? Well, one way that you can do this for writers is to do exercises. So at the same time, every day you kind of check in and know that this is hard. I know it's just like exercise, like physical exercise. You have to really get in a routine and you have to do it consistently or you're not going to see any results so but let's just say that you know for fun just for fun you want to do something it's not writing your novel it's not writing your whatever this daunting task is that you're having trouble with but just getting down some exercises like for instance um, some vocabulary exercises so let's say you want to expand your vocabulary every day you look up some words that you want to um, you know use in your books or whatever in your writing or maybe you just sit down and write some sentences in your journal or maybe you do you go to a coffee shop every afternoon you have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and you listen to people's conversations because that's what sloths like to do seriously they like to listen to people's conversations and slowly take it in and say oh I could write a fantastic 
TV show out of this one conversation. I know it's really not what floss do at all. It's what I do, but it's what I like to think of. Like I, you know, I'll, if I'm ever alone in a coffee shop and I hear a great conversation, I just think I could write a book out of this. I could just create this and then it never happens. But, um, so <laughs> that was terrible sidetrack. Sorry about that. So you're always patient. And so when you start doing these exercises, what you'll notice is the sloth kind of picks out and wants to see what's up, like what's happening, what you're doing there. Hmm. Little interest engaging. Um, so that's nurturing. Every day you want to have this practice. And then eventually you'll start turning that into actually writing. So nurturing, routine every day it's just like if you were had a sloth as a pet you're going to feed that sloth every single day you're going to show up and say hey buddy how you doing here's your food and then eventually the sloth is going to come out and play with you another thing that you can do is praise the sloth so you want to write down the nice things that people have said about your writing and make them visible even if you go back to like when you were in high school and your teacher said fantastic job do you know when I graduated high school my English teacher said that basically I made her sick because I she knew that I put in no effort and wrote fantastically well I take that as an ultimate compliment I don't care if it made her mad that I didn't sit down and write out an outline and do all the process and I didn't write down her stupid note cards that she wanted but that I could still write fantastically anyway so I think about that we all have this imposter syndrome where it's hard for us to say writer I'm a writer I go to networking events and I will say you know I introduce myself as an event planner which is what I do but I also write and then you know a friend will say hey she's written books and I'm like yeah, yeah I'm a writer we all have that and so you know because what I said was the bee has been nurtured the sloth has not and so you just have to continue to nurture that and praise yourself. Um, so write those things down. Another um, example is my Evolving Through Bullshit book. So this lady reached out to me on Instagram and was like, I don't know you at all, but I feel like we have this great connection. And I was like, this is why I wrote this book because I wanted to find people. I wanted to just reach people and say, hey, you're not alone. I've been through some shit and this is how I got over it and hopefully help people. Um, so anything that you've, you've noticed that people have said about the way that you write or what you've written or anything that's positive about your writing, write it down, put it on your laptop, write it in your journal. Um, praise yourself for that. Praise this loss. And then finally, just have patience. Don't hurry. Be happy. Keep coming back. Only when you're ready. Start with a paragraph. Write it. Leave it alone. Don't yell at it. Don't freaking scare the sloth back into hiding. Don't get angry. That sloth will come out and play when it's ready. And it'll be great. It'll be so much fun. And it'll be fantastic. So that's pretty much it. I hope that this helps you kind of understand writer's block. It is um, a really difficult thing to overcome because it's not been nurtured. And if we treat it well, we treat our sloth well, then eventually we will get over that hump. Um, yeah, that's it. Bye, guys.